Hi guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. So I've been asked to comment on something and I'm going to try to take a neutral, unbiased approach in this video like all my videos, but the topic that everybody wants to hear me talk about appears to be the Revenge of the Bird King PlayStation 4 limited release fiasco, what went wrong, what's going on with the market for that particular game. So I'm going to comment in an unbiased fashion in regards to this topic and I really want you guys to understand what's happening in the market for certain types of mass-produced collectibles at present time. A couple of months back, I did a video where I talked about artificial manufactured scarcity in the greater collectibles marketplace versus authentic collectability in the collectibles marketplace. Now to be fair, that video did not get a lot of views and I understand that because my channel really even at this point only has about 350, 360 subscribers. But what I basically said in that particular video is that you have to understand that the reason items like stadium events, like a rare or uncommon prototype rocket firing vintage Star Wars Boba Fett figure or an alpha, beta, or unlimited Black Lotus card or a Pokemon Illustrator card has value on the secondary marketplace today is because nobody saw these items as valid assets and or collectibles at the time of their original release. If we want to talk a little bit about stadium events, that item went into production and was quickly pulled due to a conflict of who owned the original rights to produce that game. It was never meant to be an iconic game or a collectible item that would sell for thousands of dollars on the secondary market. It happened because collectors made that happen just due to the allure and the fact that it was released for the iconic Nintendo Entertainment System caused the item to be sought after by collectors. There was a time, I've said this in another video, I at one point owned between seven or eight copies of stadium events. As a matter of fact, I talked about this in another video. So you guys can go back and watch it and keep, keep me honest. I've sold several copies of that game for anywhere from $6,000 all the way up to $10,000 and or more. It was never meant to be collectible because you used to be able to go to a Funko Land store, for those of you that know what that is, back in the late 1990s or early 2000s and get that game on store shelves, assuming they had it, assuming they had it because it is pretty scarce and uncommon, but you can get it for under five bucks. And back then, nobody really cared about it because Nintendo collecting wasn't fully developed at that time point in history. So, why did that game become worth money today? Because it was never released as a collectible item. A lot of you guys are going out there and you're spending what I consider to be frivolous or obscene amounts of money on stuff like HasLab items, meaning the Transformers, I forget which one it is, the, the Unicron that just came out for $574.99. Because it was made in limited quantities, you guys think that that item is going to be sought after and worth money 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line. Another thing that people are paying a premium for right now is Nintendo products. And I talk about this in depth. A lot of these items that are a flash in the pan that Nintendo does a quick run of, of a collectible edition of one of their games, people run out and pay a premium for it. And I'm sitting there scratching my head, what the heck are these guys doing? Well, as I check out other YouTube channels and people who are commenting on the video game collecting frenzy or the Magic the Gathering collecting frenzy or the vintage toy collecting frenzy, these people have it in their mind that because Nintendo or Hasbro or Wizards of the Coast only made a production run of maybe 100,000 items or 50,000 items, that item is going to be rare and sought after in the future. Well, guys, 
those of you that watch this channel regularly already know my thoughts on this concept. We can go all the way back into the 1800s and manufacturers were busy creating scarce products for the secondary collectibles market, at least in the United States. And again, I live in the United States. I can't speak for the rest of the world, but these are known facts. Most of these items today, even if you were to uncover them and put them on eBay or put them on auction sites, if they would even take them, would go for pennies on the dollar. Organic collectability is the true secret to investing long-term in the antiques and collectibles trade. So this brings me to the topic of Revenge of the Bird King. I have to sit here and criticize the people on eBay who are right now buying into this stupid concept that a game like Revenge of the Bird King is going to be the next stadium events or the next, dare I say, sticker sealed, factory sealed first edition of Super Mario Brothers. It is impossible, guys. It is a manufacturedly scarce item with no organic collectability. To use a term coined by Rudy from Alpha Investments, the people who are paying a premium for this item right now are Timmy's. They have no understanding as to how the greater antiques and collectibles marketplace works. If I were to take this back to one of my mentors in the antiques and collectibles trade, who unfortunately is now dead, he would call these people poindexters. That was his term. Like Rudy uses the term Timmy's. Well, he would use the term poindexters to refer to people who think that items like this are going to have long-term collectability and growth potential. Now, I know what you're going to say. Well, Sean, there's other YouTubers that bought into this frenzy and or promoted this particular game. I understand that. And I'm not going to get involved in any type of YouTube bashing or any type of difference in ideology where I look at the greater antiques and collectibles trade using core fundamentals, economics, and finance because I don't know what they're thinking. I'm going to tell you something though, guys. Be very careful who you listen to in the greater trade. You have to understand that there are people out there that will and can manipulate the market. Even me, I've manipulated the antiques and collectibles marketplace to my own advantage. I'm not completely innocent. I tell you the truth. I told you when I started this channel, I use short-term speculation of the trade to finance a lot of my long-term investment grade purchases in the trade as a whole. So what I mean by that is I go after a lot of these flash in the pan speculative crazes. I take the profits out and I put it into coins, currency, collectible first edition books, historical documents, artwork, and I'm very good at doing it. I'm also very good at analyzing markets. Now, what I see happening with the Revenge of the Bird King, if you look at completed and sold listings on this particular item, you're going to come across items that sold for anywhere from $358.06 with free shipping all the way up to $549 for this particular game, which means there's a spread of $200 in some of these auction listings that, have, that are completed and sold. So even the people that are buying up this game don't understand how to value this particular item. There's too much of a variance. Now, why is that happening? Because a lot of these people who don't understand how the greater antiques and collectibles trade works think that something like this or something that any of the game companies out there like Limited Run, Play Asia, I Am 8-Bit, whatever they are, where they're releasing these products into the market that are quote-unquote limited in production, what people need to understand is those type of items will most likely never become the next stadium events, will never become the next Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, Black Lotus, will never become the next Pikachu Illustrator card or any type of item that has significant value in the collectibles marketplace. I'm going to leave you with a little homework assignment at the end of this video so that you understand where I'm coming from. If you don't believe me on this concept 
of understanding where the difference lies between manufactured scarcity and true scarcity and collectability in the collectibles market. This is what I want you to do. All I want you to do is go back to the 70s, 80s, and 90s. You name, you name me one item that was produced as a limited edition mass-produced collectible that became worth money today. And I will eat my words. And I guarantee you, you can't do it. You can come close. There's certain sports cards and certain comic books that were released with like a hollow foil cover or a different variant that kind of slipped through the cracks and people covet those items today, but they are not on par with stadium events or any of your organically rare, quote unquote, Magic the Gathering cards, Pokemon cards, video games, what have you. Items like this are very poor long-term investments in the trade. I've said this before, I'll say it again. When we analyze the market for collecting factory sealed video games, it is very speculative right now. Chances are in 10 to 20 years, no one's going to care about owning a complete factory sealed set of PlayStation 4 games. They're gonna download them. And I know a lot of you guys like to argue with me on that concept. I'm telling you, I predict the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Scarlet, whatever it's going to be called, to usher in one of the last generations of video game consoles as we know it. What's going to happen in the future, and I truly believe this, we're going to have something like a PlayStation Unlimited system that you upgrade much like a computer, but you download all the games. So if you want to play Silent Hill from your original PlayStation, you're going to download it. If you want to play Uncharted 4, you're going to download it onto that same console. There's too much variance into what's happening with the video game marketplace and how collectors are viewing that particular marketplace as to what's actually happening in the marketplace. Yes, there is a massive speculative bubble in these type of products. And I've said this before, I love a lot of limited run products that they produce, but again, if you are buying a limited run game thinking that that particular item is going to appreciate across the board because there's only 2,000, 3,000, or 5,000 copies of that game, I have a bridge to sell you. The collectibles marketplace does not work that way. It's organic. It is not manufactured to increase value by creating quote unquote scarce products that really aren't scarce but they're marketed to be scarce it's just like people are asking me what i think about the stupid is it the lion king or whatever sega genesis re-releases of two disney classic games that they just put out those are bad investments if you are buying for long-term investment you have to understand this these type of items they capture the attention of the timmies and the poindexters out there who have no understanding of how economics, finance, and the greater antiques and collectibles trade works as a whole. So they go out and they start spending money on this stupid stuff. And before you know it, they're in debt. They have a room full of worthless collectibles that honestly mean nothing to anybody else who has moved on from a lot of these mass produced, flash in a pan products that are not gonna have any meaning five, 10, 15, 20 years out. So my plea to you all who watch this channel is to please learn from this concept. I'm going to put one final thought into your heads. People are going to go, well, Sean, I guarantee that since there's only a limited amount of these games, they're going to sell for more and more money over the next few months to possibly the years. Yes, you are correct. Other Timmies and Poindexters are going to come into the market and they're going to purchase some of these items up. But I guarantee you, after word gets out from channels like me and other commenters in the greater antiques and collectibles trade who actually know what we're doing, who drive around in Mercedes and have paid for houses already, what's going to happen is these people are going to learn that they're going to have no one else to sell this overpriced crap to. If you really want to play Revenge of the Bird King, get a Nintendo Switch and download it because I think it's like nine cents at present time 
on the eShop. There is no justifiable fundamentals that dictate this game will ever be worth what a stadium in events is worth today in 2019 dollars and or value. I value your feedback on this video. I thank you to all my subscribers and I really appreciate you guys sharing and or commenting on my videos. Thanks guys and have a great day.